Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife and Resources Agency. A good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. Wow, we could have done a a whole show uh, on Alton Jones uh, at 57, still chunking away at the, the, the pro bass world, just won a hundred thousand dollars over in North Carolina. And so we're going to switch gears a little bit on outdoors with Larry Ray. You know, that, uh, this show will, uh, in August, we'll celebrate 20 years on the air in the Memphis and surrounding area. And you know that uh, we don't just talk hunting and fishing. That's why we have a uh, diversity of uh, guests. That's why we have, uh, co-host to help keep me straight and that's ron wong and bill cooksey with us right now but we're going to switch gears because there's a big event started yesterday in one of my favorite places in brownsville tennessee and hello all you folks out in brownsville on 15 20 a.m and 95.3 fm i got some great listeners in the brownsville area and of course in jackson uh, where bill cooksey lives uh, news talk 101.5 uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the the event that's really kicking off with the Hatchy Bird Fest. And it's kind of going hybrid as it started yesterday and goes through Sunday. And we are happy to have on uh, three of the hybrids, if you want to put it that way. Uh, one of them's grounded there because uh, he will be live. As, you know, I, I always say this, and you, you, forgive me, but when they say on TV that uh, this person is reporting live, from the scene of the of the accident, I, I hope they're not dead, you know, because uh, <laughs> if they're standing there, I believe they're alive. Well, Bob Ford will be up there at the Hatchie this morning. Uh, Birdfest uh, is doing hikes and things along that line. Good morning, Bob. Hey, Larry. How things going today? I'm doing great. And then uh, John and Bob was uh, two guests. If you didn't go yesterday, well, you missed it. But I think maybe you can probably pick up what they did in today's technology, which is above my head, uh, via some other format. But uh, as a part of their program yesterday was Richard Crosley, uh, international acclaimed birder and author of the Crosley ID Guides, which I have too, and along with Holly Merker. She is a professional birding instructor for the National Audubon. And she, uh, both of those had programs yesterday. And I told both Holly and Richard that we got to get them back for a whole segment with them. But uh, before we get to the end of a lot of things, so Richard and Holly, I know you're in California. It's early out there, but uh, good morning to both of y'all. And let's talk to Richard first. We'll come back to Holly, and then we'll do Bob. Richard, I mean, uh, your work is uh, pretty amazing. So talk about what you talked about yesterday. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Good very early morning, I should say. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so, so we just talked about connecting people to the outdoors. You know, I think uh, I think everybody who's on this phone call loves the outdoors, and uh, we say we're all hunters, whether it's with binoculars, scopes, cameras, yes, or, or just looking in our backyard. So we were really talking about just how to connect people uh, to birds and, and other wildlife in a better way so that we really got the maximum enjoyment out of it and uh, that was about it really nothing too complicated and we tried to make it a bit of fun you know well i know uh, as you can tell you're not from around here you know so i mean the, the you, you've been across the pond you came here uh and a lot of our folks uh, that i know in my audience recognize your name through your guides uh, and i've got to ask you is this what you wanted to do when you were growing up you know, I was so uh, so <laughs> focused on traveling around the world and just being into birds. You know, birding for me was always actually a sport. It wasn't wasn't a hobby. You could argue it was my life. So everything I've done in my life, really from the age of 13, was based around birds. And so to actually do books and, and try and make a difference was not a goal. And uh, you could argue that I had a... Uh, well, I've had many midlife crises, actually, where I want to, I felt it was time to, to pay back, to give back. And so I started doing books, a lot of things with youth burden uh, and things like that. So 
And being, um, I lived in Japan for a while, obviously, I'm English, Northern England, Yorkshire, where they make the pudding. Yes, and, okay. um, So I've learned a lot, you know, different parts of the world do conservation, nature, different ways. So uh, I've tried to pass on some of the inspirational things from other people uh, to folks here. Well, I, 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 folks, you just Google uh, Richard Crosley, C-R-O-S-S-L-E-Y. And look at all the, the, the guidebooks that he's done, and uh, it's pretty remarkable in what a service you have done for birding, uh, whether it's waterfowl or whatever. And then, Holly, I know that uh, you're a cancer survivor. Uh, you've, got, you've come up with something that I think is pretty cool for our listeners out there. And uh, so talk about these, uh, as you call it, uh, for your mind, body, and soul. And you put some therapy into it. So talk about that. Yeah, good morning, Larry, and good morning to everyone out there listening. So, yes, um, our initiative, and actually Richard Crossley and I have just co-authored a book along with his daughter, Sophie Crossley, called Ornotherapy. Ornotherapy. Okay. Yes, Ornotherapy. So, you know, like you said, I feel that really birds help save my life while going through an ordeal with breast cancer um, many years ago, actually now, uh, because I use birds as a therapeutic resource. Um, what I mean by that is birds help me get through wow. a really difficult time. Yeah. And I use that birds by just looking outside my own window during a really tough time in my life, watching the birds around me, connecting to them, really getting to know. And it's just the birds right outside our door Everybody has access to birds, and that's the beautiful thing. But, you know, now research is showing that making show, connections yes. to yeah. outdoors and being in nature, it has benefits beyond just that enjoyment that we all get from it. It actually can do things like lower your heart rate or decrease anxiety or stress. And for me, that was huge during that really difficult time. And for others, it can bring so much more to your experience of just just by connecting, well, by really watching and observing. So really what we're trying to help to teach people is how to look at birds, and by doing that in a more mindful way with intention and purpose, all those benefits will come naturally. Well, and I, honestly, this is a conservation package just wrapped in a different way. So you, it's really exciting. Well, you can go to crosleybooks.com. And to find this, and I know I'm going to tell before we jump over to Bob and talk about the events going on this weekend. I, I, I hated that we I didn't able to to see the things, but I'm hoping I can pick it up online someplace. What you talked about, and Bob can fill that in. But I I I get stressed out going to the dentist, but right outside the dentist chair is a bird feeder, and I can guarantee you it helps my anxiety when I've got my mouth wide open. And they're drilling on me, and I can see the birds out there. So I can see this, y'all. It's part of my makeup. So, but anyway. Larry, let me throw in real quick. I mean, we're mostly talking to a hook and bullet crowd on the show here. Um, but that doesn't mean, you know, birding isn't for you. Uh, That's right. I, I, I watch birds. I study birds. Uh, it's something else to do in the field to broaden your experience yes yes you know rather than take from it can make you a better hunter um and it gives you something else to focus on at times when uh when maybe the hunting's not so good yeah it's quite interesting being brought up in england as you probably know there's very little hunting yes so i'm i actually am a hunter if i'd been brought up in america i'd have probably used a gun Yes, and so, like I said, birding's not a hobby to me. It's a sport. It's it's life. Uh, but sure. I really think hunting with a gun, binoculars, scope, is really just just tools to be out with nature. There you go. You know, yes. in, in the world I grew up in, I know thirteen guys personally who died birding. And so, when you say that in America, people are always shocked. But it, it's it's just the connection, the love of the outdoors, and. Yeah. Uh, Yes. Um, so it's really very, it's very, it's almost identical to hunting. So we're, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter what the tool is, we're just all the same, you know. We love, we love being outside, right? <laughs> yes. Right. Well, we're going to, we, as I say, we're going to get both Richard and Holly back on, but uh, when we can talk more 
But Bob, fill us in uh, on the on the bird fest. I know you got some hikes this morning, starting at seven thirty, uh, and some other things. So talk about the bird fest, uh, Bob. Yeah, sure will, Larry. I, I got to play into that last conversation as well, though, just for a second, Larry. Go. You know that I grew up there in Memphis. And I grew up duck hunting with my father, starting at four years old, and then there you go, Bill. Yes, <laughs> training uh, bird dogs and. And then when I got to teenager, I started chasing birds with binoculars and cameras, and I still hunt and still bird watch. It's a sport, as Richard says, for everybody. It doesn't. It's uh, not uh, not really much different than hunting. You know, you're chasing a bird and, and trying to pin it down. Anyway, yeah, a little bit later this morning, actually right here on top of it, at 7.30, I'll be leading another hike. Uh, another person will be leading a hike. Uh, we have a hike at 7.30 also on Sunday morning. Tomorrow. Okay, all right. Uh, those hikes are about three and a half, four hours, but we are being COVID conscious, uh, COVID precautions. We're all in different cars, caravaning in your own car. We ask people to wear a mask if they're, or encourage people to wear a mask. But we'll be driving to two or three spots and then getting out of the car and, and walking a good way. So, so you'll meet, uh, now, does everything happen at the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center? Is that where everybody kind of uh, congregates and is that where everybody shows up at that's our that's our gathering location sure is and then we'll you, meet and drive from there a good bit of our time will be spent on the hatchy National yeah Wildlife. beautiful beautiful place uh i know they got some things about o'neill lake too uh i i've had great memories from o'neill lake as part of this but uh this is uh the once again this is the ninth annual hatchy bird fest which is uh, virtual and in person, uh, but they will be taking uh, a lot of events going on, uh, thanks to, uh, to to Sonia Outlaw Clark and all the great folks at the uh, West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center in Brownsville. And as far as I know, it, it, it is free, isn't it? Every event is free. Um, and very yes. quick, too, uh, if you can't get here at 7.30 this morning, at 8 o'clock there will be a hike being led about nature photography, bird watching. Really? And photo- uh, okay, Hopefully folks. The nature photographer will be leading that hike. Hop in your car. Uh, go to Brownsville. You can find at the Delta Heritage Center there in Brownsville and, and take part in this great event. Uh, Richard, thank you. Holly, yep. thank you. And uh, we will definitely stay in touch with you all. And, and Bob, always... Uh, uh, I've got your number now. Let's stay in touch and uh, do some more shows together down the road. Okay, Bob? You got it, Larry. People can go to HatchyBirdFest.com to get all the details of the weekend. And we've got that on LROutdoors.com on our website at the same time. But all y'all have a great morning. Sorry to get y'all up early, Richard and Holly, but uh, next time I'll try to get you later in the day, uh, maybe around midnight or something. So uh. <laughs> Thank Thanks so much, Larry. It's our pleasure. And uh, I'll... Gunnar, I hope everybody can make it to the bird fest because I think it's brilliant. But I would like to offer a challenge out there to all those hunters. All right. So if you think you're good with a gun, do you think you're <laughs> as good with a camera? Because I think cameras are harder than guns. Okay. Y'all hear what, that? The, what do you reckon, Larry? Uh, the, cha- he's the Richard Crosley, the man with the ID guides, uh, which I'm recommending you get some of those. He has put the challenge out there. And as Bill said, it got a lot of hook and what did you call them, Bill? Hook and what? Hook and bullet. Hook and bullet, folks. But we got a lot of birders out there, too, in this Memphis area because we're blessed to be in this area. Hey, thank you all very much. We'll stay in touch. And, Bob, I hope everything goes good today up there tomorrow. All right? Yeah, Larry. All right. Thank you all. All right, let's take a break. Come come right back on Outdoors of Larry Road. 